Well, Einhard, that is really uh, too kind. And about the triathlete, uh, that was das war einmal. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Good. So I am in a way your um, your um, your um, you know a wake up call after uh, the nice uh, but small uh, uh, lunch. No comments. No comments. No comments. Uh, and I'll talk about the value in uh, the research information system or scholarly communication, uh, as it's as it's called here. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, actually two, two main things. First is uh, where is uh, the value? Where is the value which is recognized? Where is the value which is actually hidden? And there's too much of that. Uh, and it was a little bit hinted by several speakers uh, earlier on. Uh, and I'll get to, get to that. And, um, and uh, where is value uh, not delivered while it should be delivered? What is it? Can we mention that? Can we build on that? And I don't present uh, final visions or full statements or, uh, or, uh, uh, or even agreements, but uh, it is something I invite you to participate with and build on and to think about. Um, everything starts with, uh, with the research and the researcher at mind. What do they need? What do young researchers need? What, um, what are they thinking? Uh, what needs need to be addressed? But you can say this in every industry, every business. And I think our joint responsibility, wherever you are, whether you are a researcher or a funder or a university administrator or a publisher, we have a different, we have a different uh, additional responsibility. Because look at actually those just those, I took a random sample, almost random sample, of uh, three uh, pieces of research and look to the relevancy of the mission. Um, one is about, uh, one is about uh, somehow evolving or evolving uh, plastic and concrete. Uh, one is about a huge issue of uh, uh, algae in Africa uh, as uh, uh, heading uh, brands like the Lancet we're very close to that mission of, as uh, we call it, uh, science for better lives. Um, and look to, uh, to uh, just an article on, on fake facts and, rec and uh, cognitive uh, recognition and abilities. Uh, these are just examples, uh, and they remind us what is at stake. And I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Incidentally, we have a small board, external board, who is selecting uh, monthly uh, uh, papers. Who, um, who this uh, group of NGOs, representatives of NGOs, deem the most uh, impactful researchers of that uh, month, and we have a small, uh, a small event uh, around that. But, uh, but the point is there. Uh, we are in a different, uh, it's very clear, you know, I say the over obvious, we are in a transition uh, in different ways. And uh, one of my points will be that uh, the transition, uh, one of the transitions is to open access, but there are many more. Uh, and I want to give a little bit more highlight to the other transitions as well, and the other, the other things which are happening. Uh, I think that is important uh, too. Um, but let me talk maybe just two minutes about the open access uh, transition. Uh, we think that uh, the world will be publishing uh, 400,000 uh, open access uh, articles this year, right? Uh, there's no really different uh, point of view on that, and uh, in addition, uh, the world is probably publishing uh, uh, of that other model, remember, the subscription model, the so dreaded um, um, uh, subscription model, uh, uh, which is still also growing, we think, with a small percentage of uh, maybe 2%. Open access is growing with probably you know, order size 15%, right? but it's 12 or 13 or 14 or 15, it's that sort of size. Uh, um, I have mentioned here the uh, 2018 uh, numbers for, uh, for our team, for our team, because I think you, know, you would expect that, um, and, uh, and, it, and it is there. And it shows two things. First of all, it shows a, perhaps a little bit of a testimony that we take uh, open access serious, um, uh, and the cynics of you will say, oh, it's not, uh, it's not enough. And I would say, indeed, it is not enough. We'd like to address more of the existing needs for open access. We'd like to get, if I put it in market share terms, I'd like to get a little bit more market share. 
because I think we do it well, and we serve communities also by having a higher market share. I would say that, but that's number one. Um, and number two, it highlights uh, uh, also the fact that we are in a transition. So these are the sort of volumes on open access and, and, uh, and uh, the number on the right, the, the, the small 800,000 is not really open access, as you know, it's open archive. But it is contributing to open science, right? And again, we wish it would be higher, more, sooner, etc. We're self-critical to where we are now. But uh, the numbers uh, do change every, 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 literally every month. Our investments in open access are huge. Um, and then the other side, uh, at the same time, we are in this uh, duality that in spite of giving every single author the choice of go open access uh, in the same journal, hybrid gold, right, versus uh, take subscription, uh, just the reality, and I say this without any value, the reality is, well, both choices are clearly uh, in, the, in, the, in the, you know, in, at clicking distance, let's put it that way, uh, these are the choices made by authors. And again, uh, there, is, uh, there is substantial growth uh, for our, if you like, results. Um, it homes in that uh, the transition we're in is uh, not a transition which, where the one model uh, is, for now, substituting the other model very quickly. This can change, right? Initiatives and regulation and policy making can change that. Uh, and we would like to follow uh, the needs, and the needs are uh, shaped by both uh, uh, funders, regulators, policy makers, and author needs, right? It's somewhere in that sort of mix. I don't want to overcomplicate it, but that's uh, what it is. Um, yeah, so this is one of the, uh, one of the uh, transitions. Uh, if we look to another transition, uh, I always like to have a view from, uh, from, uh, from other situations. Uh, this is one is on uh, some, some thoughts on uh, the global problem of uh, carbon emission. Um, and I also, in another place, have made a point of uh, making some, uh, not comparisons, but just looking to that uh, transition. Uh, and I don't know, perhaps we can learn from that. Um, um, and others are much better experts on, on this uh, topic. Um, but what we see uh, on the enormous, uh, important uh, problem of carbon emission is that there is uh, global, global uh, coordination at large scale. Um, there is a global uh, rebalancing uh, mechanism, uh, emission trading. Uh, which is a facilitator in uh, rebalancing uh, uh, carbon emission. Uh, there's uh, uh, clearly uh, recognition of uh, multiple stakeholders uh, rather than, um, than a single stakeholder who get uh, finger pointed and there is a degree of transition time. I say this in all neutrality. Uh, um, you know, I'm personally a, 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 um, a criticaster of how uh, some of this is going. Um, but it is also um, uh, food of thought for uh, other transitions, and I'm not just pointing to open access transition, some other transitions in the research uh, ecosystem. Um, I, sh I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, skip uh, this uh, icon um, uh, on this uh, important day. Um, uh, a little bit outside uh, the remit, uh, uh, you know, in part of uh, my small presentation here. Uh, for a country I lived uh, twice in, for people I love, uh, for a nation which is loved by uh, many parts of uh, the world, uh, you know, I know uh, for many of you uh, coming from that region, uh, your heart is bleeding and my uh, sympathy is there. We have many colleagues, of course, in the UK and they have uh, uh, several doubts. In terms of uh, transition, um, and I say this respectfully to the uh, politicians, uh, is this a transition which uh, lacked uh, forward to thinking? Is this a transition um, which, are, which is uh, lacking uh, support from major audiences? Um, is, uh, this a, is this a transition which is uh, based on uh, false, uh, uh, in part, false uh, argumentation? Uh, I don't know, um, but that is uh, what uh, you can pick up. Um, but very important uh, on this uh, particular day. 
uh, and I leave any comparison uh, with, with uh, the other things I'm going to mention uh, to, to, to further uh, deepening. I want to mention, as I said, I want to go a little bit very quickly on, uh, on a value which all of you will recognize. I will do it very quickly, understandably, because we all recognize that. But there is this thing here at the end. So uh, if you look to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the circle of value, which starts with uh, registration and review and filtering, uh, and enhancement and, uh, and um, organization of information, dissemination, you know, that sort of classical circle, well, let's not stare too long at it. At the same time, could it be that uh, it is uh, so well positioned, so part of the system, uh, that, we, uh, that, we, uh, that we take it uh, too much for granted? Are there elements which we have forgotten to, uh, to highlight? Uh, I uh, would personally think that sometimes uh, we do. Um, uh, and I also found some of the wording here, if you like, out of date. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the true circle is not a circle, it's a network, um, so to speak. Yeah, but I can't draw a, a network. So, um, and of course, what you do is not necessarily the same as a value. And I saw Kent in the, in the audience uh, somewhere, so I hope I, I, uh, uh, it's clear that uh, he wrote that. Uh, there you are, yes. <laughs> Um, if you uh, sometimes I say to uh, to starting uh, publishers, um, you know, go read uh, this uh, blog. It's 102 things you uh, you need to do. You know, you have uh, five days or six days in the week, and uh, go do them. Um, no, I'm joking. But there's a lot of uh, stuff there, and uh, some of them I would recognize. Uh, it's fun to read, actually. It's fun to read, and it's a it's a conversation piece. Uh, but again, it's not necessarily value. What you do is not necessarily value. Value is in the eye of the beholder, uh, but I really love this, uh, so well done, Kent. Um, I want to make a step, actually, to, um, to in my view, we have uh, the, uh, the uh, no, let's first uh, say this, there, there, there are more uh, studies and better studies on, uh, on value, and I mentioned uh, two, and they are, I thought on this sort of Brexit voting day, I, I should mention uh, two uh, pieces of uh, of uh, research, I think it is, uh, made in collaboration with the UK Publisher Association and, uh, and a company called Frontier, not, not a publisher, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, uh, and I think they, they, they did a good contribution, a good attempt to, uh, to describe value of the publishing system. Uh, I, I don't think they have cracked it. It's very difficult to crack. Uh, for instance, on the first report, maybe I, can you read this? Is this legible? Yeah, I think it is. You, uh, the first one is, um, I don't have to chew it up, but the first one is uh, literally saying uh, there's a lot of value. However, it's very, you know, there's a lot of value in innovation. There's an enormous contribution of uh, the, 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 the research uh, information sharing system uh, also done by publishers in that innovation, but it's very difficult to disentangle that. Right? I, I'm sort of freely translating uh, some of it. Uh, and the next one, the, the other report, is on the contribution more to the economy, which I skip. It has a significant, of course, uh, impact. What was it in the UK? Uh, with uh, 70,000 people working there and 8 billion revenue overall in all uh, publishing uh, areas. That's contribution of value to economy, which is not necessarily automatically um, uh, value to, uh, to, uh, to the researcher, which is... I remind the focus point. Okay, so, so uh, my uh, list, uh, and I invite you to make your own list, uh, probably a better list of uh, where I think there's value, but the value is actually rather hidden, it is not well communicated about, is, uh, is, in, uh, is in the following four points. First of all, editorial independence in scientific matters. Um, it is, um, it, is, uh, it is hidden. It, uh, I think the world has 100,000 uh, 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 people who have as a side job, often, uh, who are editor-in-chief. Some of them are uh, hired professionally for, for, for daytime, so to speak. Many do it, uh, many do it uh, next to their job, or they are partly supported financially do, do, uh, through, uh, through a society or commercial or not-for-profit uh, publishers. Um, they play an important role, and it's good to dig into that. Um, the second one is on the enormous amount, the hidden, the hidden volume of uh, 
if you like, uh, dispute around uh, the articles, author dispute, authoring dispute, uh, duplicate submissions, uh, plagiarism, falsification, uh, commercial conflict uh, at a big scale. Uh, publishers tend not to talk too much about it. There is a sort of uh, sort of silence around it because it's kind of it's kind of awkward to mention it towards your customers. Actually, the majority of um, of, uh, of um, the majority of retractions, for instance, are prevented. Yeah, this is probably not an appropriate sentence, but you know the majority of uh, of ethical problems uh, are prevented, and that is a that's probably a ratio of uh, 90 over 10, and probably more. Uh, every every one of you who is uh, who's leading publishing teams will have a fair proportion, maybe uh, up to 20% of their teams working on. Uh, on uh, ethical issues of some sort. Anyway, um, the next one is uh, close to that. And the next one is almost more serious because it's not a, um, it's a debate and, uh, and ethical infringement from within the system, but from outside the system to, uh, I call it here, editorial teams, to publishers um, of, of any kind. It's kind of hidden uh, and it's kind of silent and I want to break that uh, silence. Uh, this is about, uh, the, uh, for instance, the pressure of uh, governance or NGOs in relation to, I mentioned one thing, for instance, uh, taking out authors of published articles because uh, these authors uh, appear to belong to a faction in a certain uh, country which are um, uh, not uh, the, uh, the, 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 the right faction um, or are in jail. Um, I take I talk about uh, censorship, where published articles are asked to be removed from uh, collections. Uh, I could talk about um, uh, the uh, the uh, the hidden work of uh, researchers who self censorship themselves in changing uh, geographic uh, names uh, at the geographic expansion of uh, some countries. Uh, and I know most of, you, most of us come uh, from, uh, from Western countries and all of you have a global view, so you will, I, know, I realize you will recognize quite a lot of that. Um, uh, keeping off that pressure is an important uh, task and I attribute to uh, uh, every publisher, uh, whether it's an uh, academic press or not-for-profit or commercial publishers uh, trying to do the right thing there. Not easy sometimes. Uh, last but not least, uh, peer review, and actually not peer review, you know, if you think about peer review, and I know, you know many people outside uh, your direct uh, audience would think about peer review, that it sort of improves an article, I guess, right? But, um, but uh, do some survey and see that uh, you know, 70, 80 percent is about uh, the improvement, feedback on the conduct of research and research analysis, right? And actually in terms of volume of uh, the length of peer reviews, you can uh, trace that down and correct me if you have different uh, findings. Uh, this is just a list, you know, it's not a complete list, but uh, I found uh, some of this needs to be uh, spoken more of. Um, you know, the counter, the counter narrative of, um, of, um, of uh, sincere quality uh, contribution by a publishing ecosystem is, uh, the, is predatory uh, publishing. Um, and I really found the name wrong. It's just sloppy or poor uh, publishing as others also have suggested. Um, and, uh, but I want to uh, point out two th things very quickly. First of all, the, f the scale at which this is happening, the scale, look to those numbers. This is, this is, this is a, a serious piece of research and it finds in 2014 a volume of over 400,000 uh, uh, articles published under suspected uh, priority publishing. Uh, so the scale is one. If you look to another study in, uh, in the area of nursing, uh, the area of nursing, uh, you know, it's not a huge area. And these researchers look to 140 suspected journals. So 140 journals. And they had some findings there. They, for instance, uh, thought that uh, they, 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 they measured. They read every article. They turfed, you know, what they saw, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't think they, they use the artificial intelligence. I'm not sure whether it's possible. Um, but uh, one, third, one third had a completely flawed design, you know, any, any prevention to take any conclusion from. I think uh, on the bright side, 60% of the articles use data to draw a conclusion. 
I say this again, 60% use data to draw a conclusion. Um, uh, this is astonishing. Uh, combination with, uh, with the volume and the fact that they are, of course, open. There's nothing about open access. Uh, this uh, summer was, as you all know, has been the, as we call it uh, internally, the summer of, uh, of um, predatory publishing. And uh, some people have said, yeah, this is a very convenient uh, time for, uh, you know, that this news comes out. Very convenient for all publishers who try to uh, to the, the opposite of uh, Priority publishing. Uh, okay, uh, I cannot do much with that remark, um, uh, but I worry about the uh, sort of the hidden impact in terms of education and research uh, to young researchers and the image of uh, science to the public. And I think I leave it. Uh, I leave it there. And maybe just saying also that uh, you know, just if, in case anyone would think that priority publishing is just a single point failure, like maybe on the peer review. Um, then, uh, then uh, you're wrong because if, in the cases of, for instance, plagiarism, uh, I don't know, you know, raise your hand if you have completely different uh, uh, responses, but uh, typically uh, predatory publishers are irresponsive if there is a plagiarism case. Yeah, you can call them, they don't call back. You can email them, they don't reply. Yes, yeah, they're not part of that community engagement, which is, which is astonishing, absolutely. Um, Yep, but and at the same time, it reads like, a, like indeed, it reads like a you like convenient, a helpful, um, and a counter narrative of what publishers generally do. Take the reverse. That's what we do. We try to prevent this. You know, it's been said before. I'm going to make now a. Uh, you know, this is one of those slides where everyone will think, well, what is coming now? Uh, he is going to talk about uh, troll farms. Yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about troll farms and make a comparison between. Um, the, uh, the social and news media, uh, so that is much broader than the broadsheet uh, news uh, industry, uh, and uh, the ecosystem of research communication. And my invitation is to think, uh, is there a comparison to make? Are there early signs of uh, what's happening in the uh, news industry? Uh, is that, uh, is that uh, translated to, uh, to the research uh, ecosystem? And if so, uh, what can we do to prevent that, to block that? Uh, my own assessment is uh, this, that, uh, that clearly in the area of piracy, uh, you have piracy at scale. Of course, if you love piracy, you will be very happy with it. Um, if you, in the area of fake news, my little uh, intermezzo on priority publishing is probably making the point there. Uh, you all know what troll farms are. Do we have troll farms in research? Or do, what are we thinking? The answer is yes, we have troll farms. We have commercial companies who, as a desperate uh, author, you can call and they will impose on a, on a different uh, uh, identity and arrange a peer review for you for the journal of choice. Uh, and uh, several publishers work with authorities to, to keep those uh, 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 fake review firms uh, outside of, uh, outside of uh, business. We get increasing collaboration in some geograph in geographies uh, with that. It's small, I don't over portray it, the problem in, uh, of troll farms and the influence of, uh, of, uh, is, uh, is, uh, in news is much bigger, etc. Censorship, I mentioned. Content monetization, if you have a system of piracy, you will also have a system of content monetization pressure. And again, if you like that, this is good news. So where's value not uh, enough delivered? Um, I will not talk about content bias, we will not talk about peer review elements, which lack major shortcomings. Yeah, remember, I'm talking now about where the system has big shortcomings. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the less than perfect system, the, the less than perfect um, state of the knowledge ecosystem. Uh, and number two, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the dialogue which we're having about it. And um, on the first uh, item of the uh, knowledge uh, system, uh, if you look to some of the symptoms, uh, uh, I can be more specific, but I skim it. I will not mention individual elements. But you will see that um, that uh, the system is um, is um, yeah, lacking interoperability. Uh, uh, it's difficult to move from one publisher to the other. Uh, it's simply not convenient. 
The researcher is not central, you know, it's not designed to make life for a researcher apparently uh, easier. Uh, it's not transparent. Use a, uh, take a, take a, uh, take a uh, recommendation. It's very unclear often, you know, what the recommendation actually is, uh, is, uh, is pointing at. Um, and, um, and again, uh, you will see it in many, uh, many areas. So what we need is a system um, that is addressing those needs. Uh, I found uh, the current system uh, outdated. It's a uh, 19th century. Um, uh, it's fragmented. It's too closed, uh, and it doesn't bring the uh, technology, uh, t technological advancements of uh, which are possible. So, uh, you know, in other words, it needs, uh, and you could use other words here, but we have chosen to use the words uh, for now, uh, more uh, source neutral, so easier for research to move from one publisher to the other, um, to more interoperable tools, information, data, you have to now log in and register, etc. More transparent, what actually is the value there? Is it, uh, is it a truly peer-reviewed or, you know, or can, you, can you trust it? How do you do that? Uh, and the researcher more in control uh, uh, and in, in many, different, uh, many different areas. Uh, take for instance one small, you know, it is uh, 2019, it's 2019 now. We have uh, the journal uh, format, uh, the article format uh, for uh, donkey years, uh, and irrespective of, your, uh, of the intention of the, 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 the search or need of the researcher, you always get the same article, starting with a title, with an abstract, with an introduction, with, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Why don't we have flexible formats? This is just one sort of symptom point. Um, the, the, uh, and you can read more about this uh, and, give, and give feedback. You know, again, this is not a, a final view. Uh, give feedback, uh, 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 this is not a silver bullet, uh, we're doing this together uh, along the lines which we, uh, which we discussed. And yes, we would love to have those links uh, with, uh, with Archive, with PubMed, with other publishers, with tools, uh, a much more open system. Um, finally, this on the dialogue, on uh, the points we seem to heavily debate about. Much of it is open access. Let me claim open access is super important. Uh, we need to get to the bottom of it. We need to understand the transition models. We need to understand the end game. We need to understand the shifts in economics. And we need to reverse engineer towards you know, a solution. And I think that dialogue also can, done, can be done a little bit better. Less from polarization and also away from moments of uh, negotiation. Let's do it not during negotiation. Let's do it also more by, by independence, uh, away from, in any case, away from heated moments like, uh, like signing uh, or before that. Um, but I would also plead to look to, uh, to other drivers who are and will be shaping uh, research information, irrespective of whether you have open access or not. Um, uh, technology, large technology players, uh, true giants, as I call them, and that is not just uh, China as a country, uh, although uh, we don't know, but also uh, the, uh, the, um, the uh, roles of uh, large technology players uh, like Google and Facebook. Uh, given uh, the way it has been, uh, they have been shaping uh, the consumer information, what can you expect there? Can we sit down with all stakeholders to understand uh, different models. Where do we uh, where do we do not want to be end up like you know in a sort of Facebook uh, way of of research, etc. Um, so that is uh, that is uh, that is what I wanted to say. Um, uh, I found this is the, my my call for action is uh, is uh, is connected to, to that. The uh, value of the scholarly communication needs, in that sense, a a more integral reassessment of values. Uh, I pointed out uh, some, of the, uh, some of the friction and the uh, integrity of the system. Uh, I pointed out that, uh, that open access and technology uh, and other major uh, developments will uh, shape the direction of research information system in, uh, f in, in functional ways. Uh, and we have to, uh, to think a little bit better about that. So uh, in summary, um, yes, there's a large value in the current system, 
Uh, yes, some of the value is poorly communicated. Um, uh, yes, we need to uh, somehow um, address the shortcomings of the uh, research uh, information system. And uh, I would appeal to a, a, a calm and a deep thinking about what technology and integrity are doing with us uh, away from, uh, from uh, moments of uh, otherwise very helpful uh, communication, uh, uh, negotiations and commercial settings. Uh, this should be outside that. Uh, there's too much at stake. A Dutch, uh, a Dutch uh, poet uh, said that everything of value is vulnerable. Uh, in German, everything of uh, value is uh, wehrlos. Uh, everything of, um, of waarde is uh, wehrlos, said uh, Luzebert. And uh, a little bit is, uh, is, uh, is uh, my conclusion on uh, looking to the ecosystem. It's a very valuable system, but it's also fragile. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have time for a few short questions. And uh, Philip will also have very short answers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so any questions from the floor? Brian. Fred Dillon, AIP. Fred. So, uh, just uh, why don't you comment on where you think we're most fragile? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Fred, th this is a very good question, and uh, and I and I hesitate to give an answer saying uh, this must be it. But what I think is that we are most uh, fragile in not thinking together. That if we take the large uh, drivers of change, that we glue desired and future uh, scenarios of where we will end up. Okay. Well, another question. Oh, you again? Since you mentioned research integrity, I never understood how Elsevier works on stances on research integrity and who the authority lies with. Is it with the Elsevier as a publisher or the academic editors? Because I know of several cases where cell group rejected the requests from universities to retract a fraudulent paper. So nothing happened. So, uh, good. Seems like a good topic which we can, uh, during tea time, uh, discuss. But the short answer is, we do this always together with the communities. We spend internally uh, big investments on it, uh, and so does the community. Yeah, joint work. And sometimes there's a conclusion which is not liked by, uh, by everyone as the result of this, if you like, arbitrage. Good, good question. One more? If not, thank you very much. Thank you.